Welcome to another episode of Surround Yourself with Greatness. And today, I am surrounded by greatness. Uh, coming all the way from Lesotho to the United States, I have my sister, Mamelo. How are you doing today? Hey, Kuda. I am doing extremely well. Extremely well. How are you doing? I I'm doing wonderful. And, you know, Mamelo and I, we've literally been on the options trading journey together because we literally started at the same time in the same program. So we've been at this for pretty much the same time. And, you know, it's quite interesting to, to then look back and see like when we started, we didn't really know anything. We were super green. I was skeptical, like are these guys for <laughs> real, like, or they're just like, you know, selling us snake oil here. But yeah. the cool thing I like about watching Mamelo's journey is that she committed to the process. She remained consistent. And now about, you know, two years later, the results show. So Mamelo, how, do, how does it feel being uh, an options trader? It feels amazing. It feels amazing. You said so much there. And I was actually just reflecting on, um, you know, where we started and how many people were with us and all that stuff and this process. And um, one of the things that I'm really, really, really happy about and really proud of is that I did stick with the process. And I'm continuing to stick with the process because it's it's still continuing. I'm continuing to learn so much about myself. Um, but when I look in the mirror, I really, really am happy about the fact that I stuck with the process. It's a beautiful thing. Um, I'm continuing to learn more about myself. And I'm sure we'll talk more about that. Um, and then, you know, now in the community, I get an opportunity to really talk about my experience because I really, from the bottom of my heart, want everybody to give this a chance and not just think in, you know, in, in, in one or two months, right? Because speaking of, right, you were skeptical. I was not. I have this thing called delusional optimism, okay? <laughs> like I literally am like delusional with this optimistic thing. And like, I, funny enough, right? Like I've actually learned the lesson in the last couple of, couple of um, years, but I did not know the lesson at first, right? Like I didn't know that whenever something is revealed or like there's something that is big and probably this is probably one of the biggest things that I be did for myself. I've done another one kind of recently in just pushing my health um, and wellness business. But uh, it was the first time that I did something for myself, took a real chance on myself. So I didn't know about the process. I said, I'm jumping in and it looked good. I was for sure I was going to be millions and millions and millions of dollars uh, like rich uh, in three months. Right. And so right. Um, and <laughs> and so what I'm glad about is that I didn't really discover what it ended up, it ends up taking for somebody to become successful until I was already in it. Right. Um, I can keep going. There's a book that I really like called the, Al the Alchemist, and I read it kind of again recently with my son. And if you haven't read that book, it's such a powerful book. It really does describe this whole journey. Um, and I think about the guy where he was like in a desert. I don't, you know, I don't really know, but if, if so this, he, he's looking for gold and he has this dream that he has to go get this gold and, but he has to take a journey. And along the journey, he sheds his sheep. He's a shepherd. He sheds his sheep because he needs to do other things in order to progress in his journey and discover so much about himself along the way. Um, and then the, he's in this desert. And so I didn't know until I was sort of in the desert. And the thing about it, like when I was in the desert, I couldn't go back. I knew I couldn't go back. I had to go forward. Right. right. So it was like, that's just what it was. It was just kind of like, I got to keep going forward right? so, until, so, until I get to my goal. Yeah. So for the viewers who might not really know, what is options trading? Because a lot of people hear, you know, trading options, this and that. Um, yeah. What exactly is it? Yeah. So they're just derivatives of stocks. Right. So like, for example, like if you buy like one 
I don't know, Apple stock. I don't know where it's trading right now. Say it's about like um 200 bucks. Where is options? What is where is Apple trading? Well, let's just say 200 bucks. Okay. Yeah, let, let's just say 100 bucks. Okay. Let's say it's like 100 bucks. But what you do with options, like you actually get to hold 100, 100 shares of a stock. And it's still going to, it's like at a discount, right? So you end up paying $100 or $90 for that same $100 stock, but this, you're holding 100 shares. And so you can imagine, right? Like if you're in a trade and you're holding 100 shares of a stock, the multiplication that comes with that. Right. It's amazing. So, so it's basically a contract giving yes. you the right to either buy or sell, um, like you said, a hundred yeah. uh, shares. But the yes. thing about options is that they have an expiration date. So they're yes. going to expire at a certain date. There's a yes. strike price that you have to pick based on if you think that the price is going up or the price is going down. Uh, and, and, and also um, one of the things you want to always pay attention to is that, you know, these, these are contracts. So you actually don't own a piece of the company um, so even if the company was to report dividend or anything like that, you're not going to get any dividends because all you do is you're controlling a contract that gives you the right to buy or sell. Now, yeah. when you make money as an options trader, is the value of that contract going up? So if you yes. buy the contract, let's say at five bucks, just to use yeah. simple numbers, and the move goes in your direction, yes, that contract becomes more valuable. So now the way you then make money is the difference in price between where you bought it at and where price is. And sometimes it could be literally in seconds or in minutes. So you can buy a contract for five bucks right now, which would be $500 yeah. because like Mamelo said, it's a hundred shares, right? So you multiply yeah. everything by a hundred. And if it goes up to $6, which would be $600, you've literally made a hundred bucks. And yes. <laughs> if you were to buy stock, you know, the price of the stock is moving by a dollar, by two dollars. So if you had to buy one share of a stock for a stock price to go up so that you make a hundred bucks, you need yeah. to have a huge position or the yeah. price has to go up significantly. So, so that's the power of options trading. So <laughs> for you as an options trader, how has this impacted you know, your life? Um, has it helped improve the quality of your life? Has it made it worse? Like walk me through a regular day um, as you're trading. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's definitely improved the quality of, of my life. Um, I, uh, so, so yeah, I mean, my, our mentors changed my life. And the thing is, like, I always knew that there was something completely different out there. I just didn't know how to go about it. And my whole journey is really inspired. And I just heard, go this way. So initially, I was investing in the stock market, like you said, buying stocks. And I was looking for a way to um, make additional income, but something that's going to sustain us. So after kind of being there, I'm realizing that this isn't quite it. And I ran across... Um, option snipers. And so, uh, so then, you know, we talked about it. I just, I kind of just joined uh, blind, you know, just blindly and jumped right in. And I'm so glad about that. Um, but what that did for me was that it gave me hope that there was another way. I kind of looked around my surroundings and I realized that um, the way that I was going in my life, it wasn't what I wanted. I would, you know, I was kind of looking gray and just like, oh my gosh, I got to go back. And not like it was terrible, but I knew it wasn't where I was supposed to be. And I looked at people that were further ahead than me and I thought, oh my gosh, that's not where I want to be. So I had my third kid. Um, so I have three children, nine. Uh, he's about to be six right now. And then I have a two-year-old who I would be holding while learning how to uh, trade at the beginning. Um, she's my little, I don't know, like inspiration in this in this area because I kind of relate trading with her. Right. Uh, all of them really, but just because she was a baby, she'd just been born. And so um, I realized that I wanted to spend more time with my family. And what was going on is I would drive an hour one way and didn't drive an hour back, but uh, my kids would be, um, I'm sorry, this was my lighting. Um, my kids would be um, in daycare and or school and then daycare. And then I would only see them from like six or seven. 
but I'm tired and I'm cooking and then I have to put them to bed. So I really wasn't spending quality time with them at all. Right. And so, yeah, right. So it's like, nah, this isn't. And so when the third one was born and I looked at my oldest, I was like, yo, like he's getting big and I'm not getting an opportunity to hang out with him. And so, um, so then, uh, so yeah, so I jumped right in. So what it looks like now is I wake up at four in the morning because wow. this is just, yeah, yeah. I love, I love waking up at that early because I have three kids, right? Like it's like uh, the rest of the day, forget about it. But I, you know, I do some stuff be between then and 12. So my quote unquote work day really is between like six, maybe, maybe a little later, actually, to be honest, probably like seven 30 and uh, 12. Uh, so I like, I pray, I meditate, I exercise. I have to have that. It's something that grounds me and kind of helps with, right? You hear these terms in trading about discipline and a whole bunch of other ones. And once I started trading, I really, really got focused here because it was kind of like here and there, but now it's super consistent. And, um, and I really attribute that to trading because I had to look at that when I was looking at the things that I was doing with my trading. So I do that. Um, so um, I do take a look at the charts right before I exercise just to kind of have an idea of where the market is. And then I come back like around like 7.30, 8 o'clock. And that's when I really get into uh, my real like analysis. Sorry, so I'm in Chicago. So that would be 8.30 Eastern time. Um, so about an hour before the market opens, I'm in there really, really doing my analysis. And sometimes it's faster. Sometimes it's, it takes me a little bit longer. But um, but uh, so I'm really doing my analysis at that point. Um, and so then when the market opens, right, I'm trading and I trade for, I give myself just about the first hour and a half because our mentors told me never to trade, trade, trade after 11, right, during the lunch hours. So I just give myself about an hour and a half to be in the market. And whatever happens in that period is, is magic, right? <laughs> right, right. Uh, so then the rest of the day, I just kind of hang, I mean, I work on my, well, I work on my health and wellness business, and then I go hang out with the kids. That's it. You know, that's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing indeed. And one of the things I like is that, you know, the market always gives you opportunities, right? Yes. And because of that, you can go into the market today and, you know, be in the market for an hour, make a few hundred dollars. Sometimes you can make thousands of dollars. Thousands, we have people yeah. in the community that are making tens of thousands of dollars a day. Um, yes. So, so once you learn the skill, it now just becomes you, right? Like, are you patient enough? Are you disciplined enough to follow your setups? Are you yes. going to take the opportunity when you see it or you're going to hesitate, right? It now just becomes about you. So one yes. of the things about trading is that you, you, you need a few things in order for you to be successful. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. My perspective is you need the tool set, right? The, the the tool set is the strategy, the setup, you know, knowing how to actually do the technical analysis to then know when to enter a trade, yes. and when to exit a trade. The yes. skill set to be able for you to really uh, understand what's happening in the market and then how does that apply to you in terms of taking a position, waiting or selling if you have a position. So that's that's the first thing. You, you definitely need to learn the skill. The second yeah. thing is the mindset. Mindset come is on, big. Huh? I said, come on, Kuda, let's go. <laughs> yeah, mindset is big. So the question yeah. that I have for you, right, is from your own experience, how important is mindset when it comes to options trading? And I'm curious to 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 hear your personal journey in just kind of like working on your mindset as a trader. Yeah, it's it's uh it's definitely one of the um my favorite things that I've gotten an opportunity to work on. And I'll tell you what, it definitely has been one of the hardest, but the most gratifying, the one that I'm the most proud of and the one that I'm the most um excited about in terms of like the growth potential there. So yes, absolutely. Skill set, tool set. Um, we're really, really fortunate, right? Like now we don't have to go through that period as much as people that was trading, you know, before people had courses and all that. And our mentors taught us some incredible, incredible setups and 
um, and just everything that we need to know about about that. I got that quickly, right? Like I got that pretty quickly in the first like three months. Now it's improved since, but in the first three months, I was pretty confident there. Uh, what happened was <laughs> was that I began to realize that there's something deeper here, right? Like there's definitely something deeper here. And, um, you know, just based on my journey, I am really, really glad that I realized that it was not, not just this journey, my spiritual journey as well. Um, taking accountability and taking responsibility for certain things that were happening. And I was noticing, I was like, all right, like these people are making some profits here and maybe we took the, tr the same trade, uh, but for some reason I did not make profits or I sold too early or, you know, something, right? And then I began to realize that, and then I was asking myself questions like, hey, you know, like, why is it like there's such a small amount of people that quote unquote make it? And I don't necessarily, I don't really know if, what the number is, but, you know, according to statistics, it's like between 10% or less, but I don't necessarily believe that. I don't, I think there, there's, a, there's some people out there that are quietly trading and just kind of, you know, making income and, and going about their lives. Uh, but I really think it's about, it's about the mindset and, um, what trading has done for me is that it has allowed me to take a deeper look at myself. Like, remember, I was just talking about I didn't really like where I was. Well, in order for me to become a different person, I have to change, right? Like, I have to change. I need to become a different person. And the person that I have always wanted to be um, has kind of been developed through this process of trading as well. It was already beginning to be developed in other areas, but like, through trading, I feel like it's been more fine-tuned. Let's put it like that, okay? Great. So in terms of patience, right? Like patience is something that I, I had to look at, like, well, who am I, right? Like who am I as a, as, a, as a trader, maybe as like a human being interacting in regular life? I'm not just like a trader in the, in the markets, like what am I doing on a, regular, on a regular basis? And I began to realize that, man, my behaviors in the market are very similar to like my behavior outside of the market, right? Like I was talking because I um, I help the community like in teaching on Wednesday nights and I was talking to them yesterday about my, my workouts. Like I work out consistently every day, but guess what? I work out for 20, 30 minutes a day, but consistently every day. So I know that I don't want to be a swing trader right now. Like I just want to, I want to get in the market and I want to get out. And that's, that's essentially, that's part of my personality. Right. So it helps me to like learn about myself. I've, I've learned to be more more patient with my children. I've learned to be more patient with my children. Um, and as a result of trading. Right. Like I talked about the discipline in my morning routine. I have that about consistent. There are all these tools, these words that people throw around. But what happened was the market helped me to uh, really break these things down. Right. So I. Uh, I'm into health and wellness, right? And it's like, but sometimes I would find myself eating a cookie or chips in the middle of the day. Like, what am I doing, right? Like I fell asleep in the middle of the day. I'm not being consistent with the person that I said I was and integrity, right? Like, it's like, what does that have to do with the market? Well, I said I was going to trade supply and demand, but suddenly I'm trading a bounce off the nine EMA. Why am I doing that, right? Like, that's just... It's just so it helps me to read the market has really helped me to fine tune so many different character and personality traits and things that I um, aspire to be. Uh, so that's really it. So and um, so really to get to it is I think that some it's and, and I hope I'm not making it this like a scary thing because it's not. It's actually a really beautiful thing. I think that it's it's I just feel like it's my responsibility and I tell the um, you know, I tell the uh, the the students in in our in our community all the time that uh, that the only thing that's required is you just have to keep going, like stay in the game long enough and just keep going. You're going right. to be profitable. You're going to make it right. Like I had a friend who in high school used to spend fifteen minutes on homework and get. Uh, an A, and I would spend an hour and get a B, right? But at some point, I caught up to her. I was getting A's too, right? right? right so right, it's right. like, so the point is, you just have to have enough time and, and enough um, grace and enough, uh, just the ability to allow yourself to learn whatever it is that you need to learn about you, 
right? As well, after you learn the skill set and the and the and the and this and the tool set, like after you get that, have enough grace and enough uh, patience with yourself to really learn about you, so that it'll just and guess what, you get you get paid for that. You get paid right. to grow. Right. Right. And 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 the, there's one word for me that comes to mind, and it's belief. Yes. I think sometimes, a lot of times when people start the journey, they, they don't fully believe that they could be that person that makes consistently $500 a day trading. They yeah. don't believe that they could be that person that can make a hundred, uh, uh, what do you call it? A thousand dollars a day consistently trading. When yeah. I first started, I was there. Like, like I told you, I was very, very skeptical. Yeah. Um, and then after some time, I started becoming better. And I was like, oh, shoot, I'm making 500 bucks a day. Oh, wow, great. And then yes. $500 a day became a disappointment. Like, it, yes. it was kind of like, like, oh, man, today I only made 500 <laughs> bucks, you know. But before, yes. I was like ecstatic if I made 500 bucks. Yes. Uh, and part of my journey is uh, when I first started, I think it was beginner's luck, like, what what Mimelo is saying, like, you know, you have the friend who does homework in 15 minutes and then gets an A. I was that, like, that was literally me. Like, we yeah. would do an exam, like, back yeah. when I was in high school or whatever. I would be done in, like, 20 minutes, but it's a three-hour <laughs> exam, right? And I would oh. be, like, top of my class. Uh, yeah. Even in college, when I graduated, yeah. I was valedictorian on my class. I had the, the highest grade in the entire school. And yeah. I learned pretty quickly. So I caught the concept pretty quickly and I was <clears throat> able to start making really good money pretty quickly. But then I became boastful, like an element of yeah. pride, an element of greed, uh, yes. an element of ego, which actually then led me to a very huge loss. I won't say the number here, um, <laughs> but I lost tens of thousands of dollars in a couple of hours trading. And yeah. when I sat down and really started looking at it, it wasn't because I had the wrong setup or I didn't know the rules or I didn't know how to trade or I didn't understand the strategies. It was because my mindset was not in the right place. I wanted to be right, but I could tell yeah. from the fundamentals and the strategies that the market is headed in this way. But because I had entered a certain direction, I wanted to prove to the market that I'm always right. Um, yes, Kuda. Me too. <laughs> so, so that's something that as a trader, you really need to watch out for is, you know, you don't have to be right. You just have to follow what the market is like, partner with the market. Don't try to argue with it. Right. And then when yeah. you do that, you'll be able to make a lot of money. Now, I'm curious to hear your side. Ha have you had a day where you've had a major loss? And yes. if so, how did you deal with it? That's a good one. So yes, I am just like you, Kuda. Like uh, in a sense that, so for me, it wasn't that I, it, things came to me easily. I had to work to get the things and then I would uh, achieve them, right? So I was an incredible athlete, like, but I put the work in to do that. It only took me about a year to get better at whatever sport, like I played basketball and soccer. I would get good at it pretty quickly. Same thing with trading. I got good at it pretty quickly. And for me, like, it was like, um, it's a, the way that you put it is exactly the way that it, that it is. Um, so I was just grit, right? Just, I'm going to push through. But it, there's difference between pushing through in this sense of, of, let me just keep working on my craft, than when a trade is going in, not in your direction. Because that, that trade has nothing, it has nothing to do with you, right? There's right. banks with millions of dollars, billions of dollars in whatever, right? Like in, in the market and trillions actually in the market, but like a, there could be million, millions of dollars in a trade. Right. And so what and am I trying doing? to like throw your five bucks? Yeah. You know, in my <laughs> you're not going to, you're not going to move the market, right? I'm not going to move the market. So exactly what you said. I, I had a, a day like that, but the way that it happened for me was that I revenge traded because I was also getting very confident and very cocky as well. So I was also like there, right? Like the thousands, but then my biggest loss was bigger, about three times bigger than what I was making in the market at the time. Because what I did was, and it was a day, I think FOMC was going on, the Fed was talking and 
I decided to trade in the morning, but then I decided to try to make it back during that time. I was gone mentally. I just, what I did was I was, I mean, come on. I, I just remember it like it was yesterday, right? And, so, and so it the was thing with FOMC, for a lot of people that don't know, this is when the federal uh, bank makes yeah. an announcement on the monetary policy. So it could be interest rates. It could be like anything that the Federal Reserve is trying to do with the economy. They have a specific day each month. Usually, I think it's the third week of the month or whatever, where they make yeah. that announcement. And the market is so volatile. You see big candles like up and down. So you could enter into a call, right? A call, the price is going up. <laughs> and literally 30 <laughs> seconds later, it retraces, goes all the way back down and creates a new low. So Yes. If you're a new trader, and sometimes even if you're an experienced trader, you don't want to be trading on FOMC. Um, yes. For this particular month, we're actually like the 2nd of November when we're recording this. It was yesterday. It was yesterday. Yesterday yeah. was FOMC. And I went in an hour after the announcement because at least people are a little bit calmer at the time. But I was able yeah. to, to make one really good trade. Um, yeah. But I was in and out pretty quick. You don't want to hold your positions too long. Um, yes. So so that's that. Anyway, I didn't mean to cut you, but I wanted to explain to people what FOMC is. So keep going. No, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yes. So, so yeah, so I'm trading on this particular day and really they call it trading on tilt. It really is. My mind is just no longer present. I'm not trading any setup. I'm not trade. I'm not looking at anything but candles moving up and down. So Kuda, when, when you were talking about candles moving, that's what I was looking at. I was looking at the fact that it looked like candles were moving up and down. But the thing about FOMC is that the next word that is spoken could literally change the direction of where the candle right. uh, ends up going. Right. So, so I was saying it looks like this is happening. It looks like that is happening. And every single time I trade, it was, it was bad. Every single time I got into the trade, um, I added size because right. what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make Repeat back what I've already lost. Yeah. Right. So I, I definitely um, I never did it again after that. Uh, and I might have revenge traded a little bit after that. But I might have revenge traded one more time after that. But mm -hmm. I don't I don't think I revenge traded any more after that. Because yeah. um, I really learned a big lesson. So what I'm saying is that um, that lesson of revenge trading, um, even though I knew that it existed, I did it anyway. Sometimes it's it's hard to it's hard to control when you're in that situation. To be honest, um, I did it again, but I reflected back on that day because that was a real nightmare, and uh, I haven't done it ever since. Um, what I was gonna say was too that what I'm grateful for is that I feel a responsibility to talk about these things because. What our mentors have done for us is that they have taught us, even by saying the things, what they are. So imagine if like as a new trader, you didn't know that was called revenge trading, right? And then you just end up doing that over and over and over and over again. So what that did for me was that, yeah, they told you don't revenge trade. This is what happens when you revenge trade. And then, uh, so just don't do it again, right? So sometimes yeah. I have to actually learn the lesson myself. Um, that's just sometimes that's how I learn. But I'm also glad that I learned quickly, especially after touching the hot stove. <laughs> right. The hot stove. So yeah, no, um, it's it's a uh, it was a lesson that I needed to learn. Um, and now, in looking back, I totally, totally, totally am glad about it because it really has made me an even better trader. Okay, so <clears throat> for someone who's looking to start trading, so they've never traded before, they're considering starting their journey, they're considering learning. What would you say to them? I'd say jump. I say go for it. I'd say go for it. Um, I, you know, I, I was, you know, one of the things that I was thinking about was, like, would I tell somebody to go the route that I went? I don't know. I think it depends on the person's uh, learning style. So some people decide to keep their jobs, and um, it depends on how much, right? Like what you have as an individual and and all that. But I went all in. I went all in. Some people advise against that. They're like, keep your job. And the reason why it might be good to, to do that is because you have a steady uh, income coming in. And so you're not necessarily so worried about making a lot in the market. But the other side of it is that 
uh, whenever you're in a position, when your back is up against the wall, it depends on the person. When your back is up against the wall, um, there's no out. That's really kind of, that's, that's really how I am, right? Like, it's like, I just told myself, I don't want to give myself any outs. Yeah. And so really, really, really decide for yourself, like what kind of person you are. So that's really the only two differences. A lot of people advise to go one way and the others the other way. So I don't really know which way is the best way, but the main point is do it. There's a statement that says, if you want to take over the island, you need to burn all the boats, right? And the bridges, because sometimes when you still have a nine to five, um, you know, you might not really fully get into it. However, I'm of the notion of if you want to options trade and you want it to be kind of like your full time thing, go in there with a plan. So what I would recommend would be you go in there with the intention of, hey, this is what I want to do um, long term, as in this is what's going to be my number one money maker, money generator. If you yeah. like your nine to five and you still want to be there come up with a schedule that allows you to trade while not compromising your work. So that's important. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing too is if you have an intention of leaving, first learn how to trade and be comfortable with trading. I would yeah. even recommend saving up three, four, five, six months worth of an emergency fund. Yes. So that if you leave your nine to five, and you have a day like Mamela and I, right? Where, where, where things hit the fan, at least you have your emergency funds that can enable you to continue paying your bills and, 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 and start over again. Um, however, if you're kind of like, hey, Kuda, I'm kind of like no safety net type of person. I'm going to quit as soon as I'm fully comfortable taking the trades. I would highly recommend that you take at least 50% of your profits out of yes. your account every single day. Make sure yes. that you're paying yourself. Uh, and the reason is, if you keep on just compounding your account without taking money out, you could have a day where you blow your account and now yes. you don't have anything set. So <laughs> what I yes. personally do is I take profits every single day out of my account. It, it does two things. Number one, it helps from kind of like, you know, just my own personal livelihood and how I survive and things like that, right? I have money coming yeah. into my bank account to pay bills. Cash is supposed to flow. It's like what? Money needs to flow. So if it's flowing into your bank account, you can now flow it into other things. You can pay bills. You can give it away. You can bless other people. You could invest it in other in other things. So so that's, that's number one. Number two, <clears throat> it makes the whole trading thing real because if you're paying yep. yourself every single day and and you go to the mall and you buy something uh from the profits you actually then realize that oh my goodness options trading enabled me yep. to do this i like traveling i set yes. goals to say like hey if i hit this goal i'm gonna go on that trip so when i'm on that trip i remember it was because of options trading. So it kind of like reinforces um, yes. my love and, and 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 really the behavior of being a disciplined, profitable trader. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. Now, <clears throat> I want I want to touch on one thing. There are not a lot of female traders that I've seen, right? Like if if you yes. go in most of the communities, you're gonna find that it's usually skewed more men than ladies. You're one of yeah. the few uh, lady options traders that I know. What words of encouragement, words of wisdom, words of advice would you like to share with, with women out there who are either thinking about becoming an options trader or maybe they're thinking about it, but they're kind of like on the edge, they're on the fence and they're not really sure that they can do it. Um, what, what would you like to share with them? All right, Kuda, let me just comment on what you were just talking about as well first. Uh, the only, I just wanted to talk about uh, what you said in terms of having savings. So yes, I forgot to say that I actually had some savings that allowed me to go all in. So that is important because me, my husband and I have a thing where 
you know, I take care of some things, he, he takes care of some things. And so I wanted to make sure that I can you know, uphold my side. Better I didn't you, want right? to have to worry about what was going on. So I absolutely had um, some savings going in. So absolutely three to six months, six months better uh, of savings would be would be amazing. And then in terms of the profits, that's an incredible thing. I don't want to breeze over it like it like nothing, because this is one of the like a lot of the things that I've noticed is that we hear these things, but then what we don't do is really understand it, how deep it is. Like, because when you're in the market, sometimes it doesn't feel like the money is real. Like right. when you make $2,000 in five minutes, you don't think that that that's real. You know when it feels real? When you don't have it anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. You don't have it anymore. That's when you realize that it's real. So what Kuda is talking about is essentially what I do every single day as well. I pull money. I pull half of my profits out every single day. Uh, that I'm profitable um, and I take care of something or I just put it in my account so that whenever it's time to do something, I have it in there. And that really makes makes it real. And, and, and at first we used to do coffee. I remember the first time I pulled money. I don't know if you remember, Kuda. I yeah. went to Starbucks and I made a video for the group. I was like, yeah, I got my favorite coffee at Starbucks. And it really, it really, really felt good. Sometimes now, I call it Chipotle money, right? So you, you Chipotle! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It makes it real. It makes it real. Uh, now, the advice for, for people who are uh, women, females who just want to be traders, I again, right, the main point of no matter how you go about it, just do it. Um, not, you know, just that's for everybody. And for, for women, um, what it is, is this, uh, this freedom, you know, like, that was what I wanted when I got into this thing. I realized that I just need a little, I needed more freedom. I needed more freedom to be able to do the things in my heart that I wanted to do as a mother, as a business owner, um, as a creative person, because it also options have given me so many options. They've given right. me the ability to options really- Options give you options. They give you options. I've been able to think. I wasn't able to think when I was driving an hour, spending eight hours. So now being able to literally just trade for an hour and a half and then having the space and the time to be present for the people around me that I love and for um, you know, for myself and just do the things that I like to do the most and be creative and, you know, run my my health and wellness business and grow that and all that. Like it's just, it's a dream, man. And I and I believe that anybody can do it. Um, we all have that thing inside of us that wants something. And I think the most important thing as human beings is that we go after that. I think I, we begin to lose ourselves when we retract into just going through the motions. There is something about me that has really come alive in the last couple of years that I just wouldn't want anybody else to miss. So these options, they give you options to do all the things um, that are important and that you would like to do in your life. I don't think there's any more to add. Mamelo, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for being an inspiration to me because sometimes when things are a little bit hard in the market and I look at what you're up to and I listen to you, uh, in, in some of the platforms we, we we were in together, it gives me encouragement that, hey, I have a fellow African out there who's also in the market <laughs> uh, with me. Uh, but more importantly, it also helps me realize what's possible because we literally started the journey at the same time. And I'm yeah. super happy to see that we've stayed the course uh, throughout. And um, here we are. So so thank you so much uh, for, for joining me here today. Thank you, Kuda. Thank you for having me. You are an absolute inspiration as well. Um, I know that, you know, you have people on this podcast that really mean a lot. And um, and I'm really, really grateful to be to be here as well. So thanks for having me.